Hi, welcome back. In this section, we're going to talk about installing the, the top housing. The first thing we need to do is we're going to need to reconnect our tube to our barb fitting. Simply slide it over the barb fitting, reinstall our clamp, spread it apart, clip it on, tighten it back down with a pair of pliers. At this point, take the top housing and we're going to want to fish the cable back up through the hole in the top housing. You can insert a, a fish tape if it'll assist you in putting it through from this side, tape the, the cable to a fish tape and pull it through, or you can simply just line it up in the hole and push it through. Once you've got your wire pulled through, go ahead and pull it all the way through. Pull the slack back up through for the equalizer tube and the cable. And as you get ready to lower it down, pull the slack up. You want to be sure to align the extra cable up through the notch in the top housing. And again, pulling the slack up as you go. Until the top housing sits down on top of the control cover. It's important to remember to put your pieces back on in order that you took them off. Going to want to insert the black grommet first. Make sure you have it in the proper direction so it'll seat into the top housing. Slide that down your cable. Next, you want to make sure you remember to put on your data tag. Slide that down your cable. Dust cap for the EQD. The shell for the EQD. And at that point, we're ready to wire up the insert. Get your, excuse me, get your wires oriented in a way that there's no wires crossed. If you hold your insert, you'll see the wires on the back of the insert that are uh, numbered. Refer to the continuity charts for the proper pin codes and wire colors to associate uh, wiring up the insert the proper way. Now that you have all the wires in, uh, wired into the insert, we can slide the cable back up through the insert, line up the insert screws with the inserts in the housing, tighten the four screws up, remember to tighten the compression nut on the liquid tight cord grip. At this point, we can re pull the slack up, reinsert our grommets. You may want to use a small flat tip screwdriver for this. Once the grommets are all installed, go ahead and reinstall your clips on your hoses and cable.
At this point, we can go ahead and secure the top housing with four bolts and four new nylock nuts. At this point, we can install the check valve. You'll notice the pins are offset. That makes it easier to line up the guide pin and the guide bar on the check valve. Get it started on the pin. Make sure it's seated in the hole in the bottom. It'll tap to get it started. Ensure that your O-rings are in place. Tighten the compression nut on the check valve. Install the four 7 16 bolts. Make sure you have the washers in place. Get them started by hand. When you're tightening up the four bolts, be sure not to over tighten them. You can crack the base of the check valve. Once the check valve is all tightened up, be sure the cane to cane discharge is perpendicular with the pump. Go ahead and snug that up. At this point, once we have our cable clips installed, we can go ahead and reinstall the equalizer on the equalizer tube. Put a zip tie around the tube, insert the tube onto the fitting. Zip it tight. And we'll simply clip off the excess. And we can put the zip tie on the equalizer to the cable. Again, clip the excess. And this concludes the top housing installation portion of the video. Now that we've repaired the pump and reassembled the pump, it's now time to test it. To adequately test the pump, you're going to need a, a test apparatus that has a water source, a flow meter. Our, our unit here shows a Protect Plus panel. A Simplex panel will work just fine. A valve handle to throttle the pressure, a pressure gauge, and a tank, of course. I'll now enter the or introduce the water, get it up to alarm level, turn the alarm breaker on on the panel. On the protect panel, the alarm light will come on during boot up stage, that's fine. Once the alarm illuminates like so, we can turn off our water source, turn the pump on, we'll watch the flow meter. While you're testing the pump, it's going to be important that you're going to want to put some pressure on the pump to test the bearings and also test the stator. As we increase the pressure, we're going to bring it up to about 30, 35 pounds of pressure. Check our amp meter. As you can see, we're running at about 6.1 amps. That's perfectly fine. That's a good stator. Decrease our pressure. It's important to cycle the pump at least one alarm cycle and multiple on-off uh, cycles. Once you've run multiple on-off cycles, you can test the manual run circuit. We'll press, depress the button, pump engages, proper amperage, release the manual run button, pump shuts off. This concludes the Environment One factory training video. We hope this video has given you a better understanding of how our system operates in the system overview section, how to identify site issues in the field troubleshooting section, how to disassemble, inspect, repair, and test in the remaining sections of the video. If you'd like to attend a training session here at the factory, or if you'd like to talk to somebody about a remote training session, or even if you'd like to provide feedback on this video, please send us an email at ssbfieldservice at e1.com. We also encourage you to visit our website at www.e1.com. I want to thank you once again for your time. We look forward to working with you in the future.